Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the previous tutorial about Gabor features, I told you that it is my favorite filter or favorite uh, feature generator because uh, there are various parameters you can change uh, in Gabor to generate various responses from a given input image. So, uh, so this, this makes it a great filter for machine learning type of purposes where you can just generate humongous, you know, various features from a given input image and feed that to your favorite machine learning algorithm, whether it is random forest or support vector machines. So just to give you a quick reminder, uh, in the last tutorial, this is where uh, we stopped. So I actually, we defined a Gabor kernel which is a function of the kernel size, sigma, theta, lambda, gamma, and phi. So by changing these parameters, you can actually get a numerous amount, uh, number of uh, filters. So in this example here, we actually hard-coded my kernel size to 5, sigma to 3, theta to pi or 4, lambda to pi or 4, gamma to 0.4, and phi or phi to 0. So the purpose of this tutorial is to uh, show you how you can uh, you can actually uh, parameterize or, op, or, or uh, change these values you know for sigma or theta or lambda and then generate a whole new responses you know from your input image and add them into for example a pandas data frame that can be fed into machine learning algorithm okay again the goal of this tutorial is to end up with a pandas data frame that has uh, Gabor responses from an input image or various Gabor responses from an input image and not just one like I'm showing here. So let's start by editing. Actually, let me run this so you know what I'm talking about. So here, this is the Gabor kernel. Yeah, because my my theta, if you look here, my uh, theta is pi over four, right? So which is angled at 45 degrees right there. This is applied onto this original image Right? and convoluted onto this original image via this line, cv2.filter, which leads to a resulting image. I mean, this is my resulting image. So because this is a band pass filter, any uh, 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 feature of interest in my original image that's angled along the same direction in this example and passing through this band is going to show up. Everything else is blocked. That's why I'm not seeing the vertical lines. I'm not seeing horizontal. I'm not seeing the lines that are angled at negative 45 degrees, okay? Only the 45 degree lines are showing up. And this is a great example on the bottom left, a checkered uh, uh, structure, you know, texture, but I'm only seeing uh, the angled ones <clears throat> at 45 degrees. This is why I love this filter. This is an amazing filter for texture extraction, edge detection, and you name it, okay? So let's jump into the code and edit it to in order to generate a filter bank or a bunch of filters okay so for any uh, machine learning based uh, you know image processing of course you are going to generate a whole bunch of filters uh, that's the goal of this uh, tutorial but then you cannot forget the original information that's inside your image right the pixel values itself are very incredible uh, uh, you know feature set that can help us uh, in identifying various regions in your image. So let's start by actually, I just typed import pandas as PD. So that's our pandas uh, our library. And uh, let's start by defining a data frame and uh, pandas dot data frame. And this is an empty data frame, nothing in, uh, in the data frame yet. Okay, it's just an empty one. So now let's start adding information to this data frame. And the first one I want to add is the original image itself, the pixel values. Now, a data frame again is a bunch of rows and columns, just like your Excel sheet. So uh, I do not want to put this two dimensional information over there, right? I mean, my uh, image is 517 by 703. I want to unwrap it into a single dimension. So the way I would do that is define a new parameter, let's say called image two, uh, which is nothing but image dot reshape and reshape minus one. This is basically uh, collapse it into a single uh, column. Now I can go ahead and uh, add a column to my data frame. I want to call my column to be original, uh, let's say pixels. Okay, so fill it with values coming from image two. 
So if I run the code until this point, let's clear all variables for now, okay? So now uh, if I run the code, you should see that my data frame has 363,451 uh, rows and one column, and that one column is labeled original pixels. This is how easy it is to add columns. Now our goal at the end of this tutorial, hopefully in 10 to 15 minutes, is to add a bunch of other columns corresponding to each Gabor response. And each Gabor response would be, let's add a column like uh, Gabor 1, Gabor 2, Gabor 3, and then keep changing these parameters and then add it to the original data frame. Okay, which means we need uh, to parameterize these values. We cannot just hard code them. First of all, let's not change the kernel size because this is typically for a given image. Uh, uh, you know, this, this uh, uh, kernel size, uh, changing it by a lot doesn't uh, change the response. Well, if you go to 50 pixels versus 5, you'll see a change. But that completely depends on the feature size that you're interested in. Okay, so I'm going to hard code my kernel size. Uh, but I'm going to change the theta, sigma, and everything. So how do we change it? We know that, right? I mean, for theta in range, yeah? So I'm going to put a bunch of nested loops uh, using fur. That's it. So for theta in range, let's only do two values, okay? Uh, and how do I want to change theta? Uh, I want to change it by, uh, let's say, theta over 4 times n pi. Uh, did I do numpy? Yeah. Multiplied by np dot pi which is nothing but uh, uh, pi over 4 and uh, get two values okay so the first value would be 0 the second value would be pi over 4 that's pretty much it so we change theta within oh I should have started with Sigma it's okay uh, so for theta so since I already got theta let me delete it so within that so by keeping the theta constant now I want to change Sigma okay so for Sigma uh, in what do we do Sigma here is 3 right so let's change 3 Sigma only two values again okay so uh, it changes Sigma the first time the Sigma would be 3 the second time the Sigma would be 5 okay now for each Sigma change lambda let me delete Sigma just so we minimize confusion change lambda and uh, how much uh, let's do a range okay np dot uh, a range go from 0 to pi okay in steps of pi or 4 pi divided by 4 okay I think that works okay so for lambda in NP range okay that's fine and uh, should we change gamma why not for gamma and uh, what do we want to change gamma to uh, right now we have 0.4 let's actually do 0 0.05 and 0 0.5 and by the way if you remember gamma uh, equals to 1 means the the kernel is going to be spherical if gamma is 0 means it's very high aspect ratio gamma okay so this is uh, high aspect ratio and uh, this is somewhere in between so for gamma so we actually did this should we change phi no let's let's uh, hard code the phi value to zero here okay let's not change it by uh, then it becomes too much so uh, first of all uh, I'm a bit curious is it working okay so let's go ahead and print Sigma lambda gamma uh, sorry let's start with theta okay so let's do this until this point let's run the code there you go so sigma is uh, first zero i mean sorry theta is zero sigma is three uh, lambda is zero gamma 0 0.05 and then gamma changes to 0 0.5 everything the same once this is done it goes to the next loop right then the lambda changes and then uh, for each lambda the gamma changes and so on so I have, uh, I guess, uh, if I look up here, it says uh, probably around 32 unique uh, uh, combinations right here. So for each of these unique combinations of theta, sigma, lambda, and gamma, now I would like to generate a kernel. Okay, so let me remove the print statement from here, and let's bring this up here. Okay, there you go. Also do this. So for each of these, generate a kernel. 
Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, once the kernel is generated, apply that onto the original image. Okay, if you haven't watched my previous tutorial, let me quickly summarize. So we are generating a kernel and the kernel is nothing but get Gabor kernel using these parameters. And once you get that kernel, apply or conv convolve that kernel onto your original image, IMG right there, right? That's my original image in gray, of course, and apply this kernel. And this is my filtered image. So F image is nothing but my filtered image. So if I run, well, let's not run until now. Uh, my F image is the filtered image. But now I would like to, by the way, let's go ahead and delete this unnecessary part so our code looks clean. So now that I have my filtered image, I want to add that as a new column to my data frame that I created. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, first of all, to add it as a column, my image filtered image here is uh, two by two, right? I mean, this is this is uh, a two dimensional. Sorry, <coughs> this is my two dimensional image, so I need to make it one dimensional. So let's uh, uh, filtered image equals f i m g, and we know how to reshape it minus one. Okay, so now my filtered underscore image is a one dimensional column. So that I can go ahead and add to the original data frame. Okay, so now, oh, I never, I didn't think about this until I started typing. So what column name do, do we give here? So here, uh, when I added original image pixels, I called it original pixels. So now I can actually call this uh, uh, Gabor 1, Gabor 2, Gabor 3, and Gabor 4. Each time it goes through the leap. In other words, this first one is Gabor 1. This is Gabor 2. This is Gabor 3, and so on. So to do that, I need to give or define something um, let's go ahead and do that here. So I need to define, uh, let's say something called Gabor label, for example. Okay. My Gabor label is equal to the text Gabor. Okay. And to that, I want to add some number. So let me define something called num equals to one here. So initially before anything starts, my number is one. So I want to add that number. So this is nothing but my Gabor label is Gabor plus number. That's it. Okay. So, oh, sorry, I need to convert this into string, right? So I make this mistake all the time again. Uh, the number is just a number, an integer right there. I cannot just add a string and integer, so I converted that one into string. So this is nothing but Gabor one. So now I can just go ahead and say Gabor underscore label. So what I just defined is a add a new column called Gabor label and fill this with what? With filtered image. I hope that makes sense. So uh, obviously I define number one. So once uh, 0 0.05 is done, when it goes to Gabor two, when it goes to the second one, okay, I want the number to be two. So we know how to do that. Num plus equals to one. This is every time you go through this loop, add your number by one, so it's number two. So the second one would be Gabor two. I am assuming things are okay here, so let's go ahead and, uh, in fact, uh, let me just go ahead and print, uh, print, print what Gabor label. Okay, I just want to confirm that my logic that I'm running through my mind is fine. There you go, Gabor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 32. Great. That's it. So our data frame is actually ready because every time it goes through this loop, it adds a new column, the data frame is updated. In fact, if you want to look at it, so let's uh, look at the uh, first few five rows of my data frame. So let's go ahead and run it. There you go. So the first five rows. Uh, the first column is original pixel. The next one is Gabor 1, Gabor 2, Gabor 3, and so on. In fact, if you want to see the whole thing, instead of just... Uh, let's do df to CSV. So I'm just writing a CSV file and I'll call this gabor.csv. Okay, so let's run it. It may take a few extra seconds because it's writing to my drive, hard drive now, and this is always the slowest component. Well, the slowest component is opening the Gabor CSV file in Excel. Excel cannot handle these large data sets, but I'm going to show that in Excel anyway.
Okay, here you go. So here is the CSV file that we generated. So the first column is the pandas data frame index. If you remember, that's what the pandas data frame does, right? I mean, the uh, first column is index here. And uh, the second column here is our original pixel values. So uh, this is the second column and then Gabor 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on all the way up to Gabor 32. This is the filter bank that we have. Well, we generated a filter bank, but we generated a image response or a bunch of filtered images uh, uh, right here. And this is all ready to go into your random forest algorithm and uh, be trained and, and blah, blah, blah. Right. So I'm going to talk about that in my upcoming tutorials. but. I hope now you understand why Gabor is my favorite and it should be your favorite if you like uh, traditional machine learning approaches. So thank you very much. If you think this tutorial is educational, informative, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I try to create more of such videos. Uh, thank you very much.